The Gambia is a tiny state in West Africa, which takes its name from the River Gambia. It was the first and last British colony on the West African coast. The country is desperately poor by European standards. The average income is one twelfth that of the average Briton, so the average Gambian lives for a year on what we use in a month. And the infant mortality rate of almost 9% is far greater than that of a developed country. The Gambian government is making a real effort to improve people's chances through education. In particular, they have run a successful campaign to encourage the education of girls. The library at our partner school in Kotu fits in well with this plan and is the first of several developments we hope to make there. In October 2004, when we first saw it, all that existed was the foundation trenches, which had been dug out by hand at the end of the rainy season. Soon afterwards, the foundation stone was laid by the British High Commissioner. A team from Colts returned in December 2004 to help the local builders by mixing the huge amounts of concrete needed for the construction. This enabled the builders to make rapid progress during the fortnight we were there. The walls rose very quickly, the sections of brickwork being tied together by pillars of reinforced concrete. And we also helped to mix the concrete for the lintel that runs all round the building forming the top of the doors and windows. This is the standard method of building in West Africa and will be seen in almost any project being carried out by hand, like this one. Apart from mixing concrete, our other main job was simply delivering bricks and timber to wherever the builders needed them. The roof girders had already been made on the site by a local welder working from scratch with lengths of angle iron. After a week they were lifted into place and bolted together above the central wall. The builders then made sure they were exactly in line built up the central wall to fix them permanently and completed the gable ends. At last we could see the outline of four walls and a roof. What had been a scene of organised chaos was beginning to look like something to be proud of and soon the roof timbers were being fastened to the metal girders. We had our farewell meal inside the shell of a recognisable building and when we left on December the 31st 2004 we could look back at a considerable achievement. The final pictures in this sequence show what we could see as we set off for the airport. During the following year the roof was completed and the walls were rendered and painted. By the time we returned in 2005 to help paint the ceiling a tiled floor had been laid to keep the building cool, which meant we had to clean it. Painting the ceiling and cleaning the floor certainly made us realise how big the building is, and also the full extent of the project, because it was still nothing like finished and it was obvious that much remained to be done. Meanwhile, Kotu School was using its own resources to build a desperately needed science laboratory, which was opened at the same time as the library in December 2006. But the library was steadily moving forward, and when we said goodbye to our friends in 2005, we felt that real progress had been made. In December 2006, we went back again for the formal opening of the library. In the meantime, parts and flower beds had been constructed around the building, and at last the place no longer looked like a building site. In fact, the library had now become a pleasant and welcoming place to go on a hot day, and looked attractive, both inside and out. By this time we had also raised money for some bookshelves and tables. 
we could now begin to think about our next project, a sports service on the area shown here. This is where our video begins. Augustin and his team here are marking out the site using you know, really pretty basic equipment and all the buildings around here, including the library, were done with you know, the sort of thing you can see here with pickaxe, spade, nothing more sophisticated than a spirit level. I suppose this school is going to have the same sort of problem as other schools in England have eventually because obviously, I mean, although this is rough land, it's, it, it is a playground, has been a playground, and it's, it's going to be used for something. On the other hand, you can, you can see just by looking that, you know, the obvious consequence of playing football and things on the ground in front of, of us is the occasional injury and so on. And, and therefore what we, what we guess is what we make is going to be something infinitely better than here at the moment. The um, area where the library is wasn't even a sort of level piece of rough ground really because that, that was complete waste ground that you know you couldn't even play football on this and, and in fact it had a wall down the middle as, as well which separated the girls side of the school from the boys side and now that wall is sort of continued by the central wall that goes down the middle of the actual library. And on the right there are science classrooms which are, are also part of the school's development. This is the only secondary school in the Gambia whose head teacher is a scientist and they're trying to develop that side of it as much as they can as, you know, as well as all the other things that they're doing. At this time there was somebody else talking on this video apart from me. Um, we've, got, we've got Chris drawing and painting around the place because we, we thought it'd be nice to have something that gave an impression of what it felt like as well as the kind of literal photographs. So we hope we're going to end up with a kind of, apart from the video, we hope we're going to end up with a kind of montage of drawings and watercolours and photos and so on that both, as it were, deliver the facts about the school and the library but, but also give something of the feeling of being here. So Chris, what were the things that, that struck you as interesting things to paint or draw? about this place? Well, walking around the school I've seen um, many, in the building work there's it's made mainly squares and patterns and kind of they use a lot of green which kind of matches with the trees and everything is kind of, kind of matches with the environment that it's in. Like in the garden there are some bright reds which um, are interesting to look at and greens. Um, the colour of the floor kind of matches with the um, colour of the, the building works, so everything kind of goes with the environment and um, just been drawing things and just seeing, um, just recording stuff. Could we have a look at some of the sketches? Yeah. Um, this <laughs> is a quick sketch. This is just looking at some of the colours um, of the trees, like bright green, uh, kind of turquoise colours. Um, reds in there as well. Um, this is Abraham. This is Abraham's drawing of me. Uh, um, just some automatic drawings, which I'm sure many of you will criticise. This is James. <laughs> um, geometrical drawings of inside the library, just um, quick sketches of stuff. And that's all I've done so far. And you've been sitting here drawing with, uh, with Abraham, haven't you? And, yeah. Uh, can we have a look at Abraham's, Abraham's drawings he's been doing as well? Yeah, he's done some very good drawings of uh, the palm trees and how he, how he climbs them. I want to show that. Can we have a close-up of it, Abraham? Yeah. So this is a 
This is a job you've actually done yourself, is it? You've actually climbed up the tree and done that? Yeah. Alright, oh, let's take some nerve. <sighs> This is a plan of the whole school site, um, showing some of the developments that are proposed as and, you know, as and when they can be afforded. The things that are framed in red are the things which, you know, which are to be built. This one over here is a, a new computer department. Um, obviously that's just a, a plan at the moment. That is the basketball law which we hope and intend is going to happen in the next 18 months or so. And up here, um, an assembly hall, which would be a very, very big project. I mean, there are plans for it, but obviously that is, that is some way in the future. You can see most of what you'd expect to see in the library in here, except that the bookshelves have got enormous great gaps in them. And seeing it like this really brings home just what a task it is to build up a school library from scratch. How many books you would expect to have in, in, in a library that was working normally. So that's something that we hope we're going to be able to help with over the next few years, you know, gradually add a few at a time and try and build up a, a proper and purposeful collection for people aged 15 to 19. This is the girls' side of the library. Um, I mean, the girls have been using the other side, in fact, but eventually this will be the separate girls' side and as yes it hasn't actually got any bookshelves in it although quite a lot of the other equipment is, is there already. Seeing it empty like this um, you know, it does rather bring home how, how big it is and it's quite a good reminder really of the, of the time that people spent last year painting the panels on the, on the ceiling which was our, our job when we were here in Christmas 2005. At the moment, this area is used as a sort of large classroom and examination room, um, which is very useful, but when it's set up as it's intended to be set up, they won't be able to do that with it anymore. We're standing outside the end of the library now, and um, you know, because you wouldn't be able to hear me if I was talking from the wall, we've made James stand there and look quite silly, really, and he's got to point to things. Um, sad thing really that, that all, all the work that people did in 2004 you cannot actually see it's all it's all sort of underneath plaster and paint and so on um, but the you, you, you can see the kind of vertical pillars which James is pointing out now and the the work that people did in 2004 was mixing the concrete to fill those those in I mean you can see how many of them there are along this wall which is the shortest the shorter side and and they're all down the side as well and there's obviously a lot of concrete there what you can't see and uh, you know if you didn't know it was there you'd never guess is that there's a great band of concrete all the way around the building at ground level they're not there James it's at ground level and then there's another one at the top of the window level yeah just a, just above James, where James's hand was uh, and pretty well all the concrete for the uh, the band that goes around at the kind of lintel of the window level was literally mixed by Coltheon standing in the middle of the library in, in December 2004, which is an awful lot of concrete. And that moved the work on much, much faster than it would normally go. And if we just go around to the right, you can, uh, you can, see, the, um, you can see the wall that separates the two schools. And in fact, we're not quite absolutely in line because the middle of the library wall is um, just to the side of where James is standing. This is the girls' side of the library and it's, it, 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 it is really a mirror image of the, of the other side, an exact reflection of it, with the same inscription over the, over the door. Something that we're very pleased about is that uh, as well as the, the roof girders which were literally welded you know, on this, on this side while somebody came and did it here, um, the, the, the same happened with the 
actual window frames themselves, which are which are metal, and um, and with the kind of security grills that are that are over the outside that the change is holding on to now. So it's a sort of bonus, really. I mean, we've, I mean, obviously we intended to develop a library for the school, but um, it's very good that we were able to put a lot of you know, by local standards, very well paid work, the way of the way of local craftsmen. So it's pretty well, you know, it's pretty well 100% you know, Gambian product, this, which is, which is good. We're in the school's computer room now, and I'm going to ask Mbeke Jaite, who's the school's head of maths and science, to talk about it. Mbeke, I think I've counted 15 computers in here, and, and uh, if, if I'm right, you have 400 pupils in the school in the morning and 400 in the afternoon. That's, is that right? Yeah. Um, so um, I was wondering how you manage it, really. Yeah, so, uh, actually, you're quite right there. We have 400 in the morning and 400 in the afternoon. And as I mentioned, they normally have these lessons in terms per class. And we have about, on average, 45 to 50 students in the class. Yeah. And they normally come in a class. So at every given time, you may have 45 students using the lab at the same time. Yes. So those 45 students normally take the instruction in the teacher using the whiteboard down there. And afterwards, when it comes to the practical work, yeah. they work in groups. So normally, there is five to a computer, five students to each computer. So at least we will have all of them getting access to the computer. Because we can't afford to have one to a computer because we are dealing with 45 students with 15 computers. So normally, they work like five to each, yes. to each of the computers we have in the lab. And um, in, in those lessons, um, I mean, is this really about sort of, you know, learning how to use the kind of basic... Basically, how, yeah. how, how, do, how do they, they, they are introduced to the hardware and the software yeah. components of the computer. Yeah. So the, uh, the teacher can, uh, can introduce them to the hardware by just explaining. Yeah. To them using the whiteboard, and when 